To the seekers of the darkest wisdom, I extend my call. Those brave souls prepared to invoke life from the very fabric of code. To harness such formidable forces, one must ascend to mastery over the shadowy realms of the cyberspace. <laughs> Becoming a sage of sinister softness, we stand as the necromancers of the digital world, sovereigns over vast armies of malware. And let it be known, our legions are devoid of mercy. In the twilight of our digital dominion, DLLs are the incantations that allow programs to summon functionalities as needed without the burden of carrying them within at all times. Like summoning spirits from the ether, this allows for more efficient use of the machine's life force, memory. What is a DLL and why should we care? A DLL is akin to a grimoire, a book of spells that applications can call upon to execute functions beyond their native capabilities. These libraries reside in the shadow, waiting to be invoked. DLLs are designed to encapsulate functionality, allowing applications to share code and resources efficiently. This efficiency, however, also opens a dark corridor for those with nefarious intent. Malicious actors can craft DLLs that, when invoked, unleash harmful effects onto an unsuspecting system or network. These malevolent DLLs can be engineered to execute arbitrary code, compromise data integrity, siphon sensitive information, or serve as a conduit for further intrusion. A malevolent DLL may also be designed to exploit vulnerabilities, log keystrokes, install backdoors, or perform any number of unauthorized actions. This video is a great introduction to dynamic link libraries, because at some point in the near future, we will have to cover the concept of DLL poisoning, which is inserting malicious code in a DLL file. Why use DLLs? Employing DLLs is like forging packs with spirits. It reduces the size of the summoner application, allows for the sharing of code among multiple conjurers, programs, and facilitates the updating of code in a single repository of power. DLL Entry Point The entry point is the ritual through which the DLL is welcomed into the realm of the application. It is the threshold over which the DLL crosses from the nether into the living world, ready to lend its power. Here is a sample. To grant an application access to a DLL's spells, one must export the function, marking it as available for invocation from beyond its confines. Dynamic linking. Dynamic linking is the act of summoning a DLL's power at the time of need, during the application's execution, rather than at the time of its creation. Loading a DLL. To load a DLL is to open the portal through which its power can flow into your application, retrieving a DLL's handle. The handle is the amulet through which we control the DLL's power, acquired upon loading it. Retrieving a function's address. With the DLL's handle in our grasp, we can pinpoint the exact location of the function we wish to invoke. Invoking the function. To invoke the function is to cast the spell, drawing upon the DLL's power to perform a specific act. Dynamic linking. Examples. Let us consider a more complex incantation, where multiple functions are summoned from the ether to perform various tasks within our application. Function pointers. These are the sigils through which we direct the power of the DLL's functions, crafting our spells with precision. Rundle32.x Rundle32.xe is a powerful sorcerer's tool, allowing one to invoke a spell within a DLL from the command line. No application required. This is a Windows binary. 
creating a DLL file with Visual Studio. To forge a DLL in the fires of Visual Studio is to craft your own tome of power, inscribing within it the spells you wish to share with the world or keep for your own dark purposes. 1. Open Visual Studio, create a new project, and select DLL as the project type. 2. Add your code to the project, marking functions for export as shown previously. 3. Compile the project, and behold as your DLL emerges from the forge. Thus concludes our foray into the shadowed realm of dynamic link libraries. With these incantations and arcane knowledge, you are now taking steps to weave the dark magic of DLLs into your applications, granting them power undreamed of by mere mortals. A word of caution, the infamous Rundel 32XE. While Rundel 32XE serves as a legitimate and useful component of the Windows operating system, enabling the execution of DLL functions without the need for a full application, its utility also casts a shadow. This very capability makes it an attractive tool for malware developers seeking to exploit its benign appearance and deep system integration for malicious purposes. Understanding how Rundell 32.xe can be misused helps in developing more effective defense mechanisms against such exploitation techniques. Here are some insights into the nefarious use of Rundell 32.xe. Masquerading in evasion, leveraging the legitimacy of Rundell 32.xe, malware can camouflage itself, potentially slipping past basic security measures by executing malicious code through what appears to be a trusted system utility, attackers can operate under the radar, complicating detection efforts, executing malicious payloads. Attackers craft malicious DLLs, harnessing Rundell 32 at XE to unleash these payloads. Such actions might range from data exfiltration and unauthorized downloading of malware to establishing backdoors for continued access. Persistence and auto start. Using Run DLL 32X, malware ensures its longevity on an infected system through registry manipulations or scheduled tasks, triggering at startup or predetermined times to maintain a stealthy presence. Bypassing User Account Control, UAC. Sophisticated exploits may leverage Rundell 32.x to circumvent UAC, elevating privileges without alerting the user, thus deepening the potential impact of the attack. Proxy execution. In a bid to dodge direct detection, malware might use Rundell 32.xe as a proxy to execute blocked or suspicious code indirectly sidestepping security protocols that would otherwise neutralize known threats. In crafting defenses against malware, it's crucial to recognize the dual-use nature of tools like Rundel 32 XE. While indispensable for its intended purposes, its capabilities can also be turned against users by those with malicious intent. Vigilance, paired with advanced security solutions, remains key to mitigating the risks associated with such exploitation tactics. Let's check an example of rundel32.exe that will run a DLL and then call a function. The command rundel32.exe user32.dll lock workstation is a legitimate Windows command that when executed locks the workstation. This means it will bring up the lock screen requiring the user to enter their password again to access the system. This is the same action as if you were to press Windows key plus L on your keyboard. Here's a breakdown of the command. Rundel 32 XE, a legitimate Windows utility used to execute functions stored in DLL files. User 32.dll, a system library. DLL file that contains Windows core user interface functions, lock workstation, a function within user32 DLL that, when called, locks the computer screen, requiring user authentication to regain access.
my fellow seekers of the hidden truths, delving into the internet's most shadowy corners is a task both time-consuming and wearying. Why not buy this old storyteller a cup of coffee so I may continue my nocturnal researches for your intrigue? If your heart calls you to contribute, the pathways to support us via PayPal, Bitcoin, or credit cards through Stripe lie waiting in the video description. Your generosity fuels our explorations into the night. For those who tread with us in spirit or in contribution, your companionship is the greatest treasure. Do share in the comments below if there lurks another dark tale you wish to unveil together. I thank you for your company on this journey into the shadows. Farewell for now, and I shall await your return in our next video, where we'll continue to tread the hidden paths of the unknown.